Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall for another video. We are going to be talking about building armies on a budget. This is something near and dear to my heart, as it is with many other people. Stretching your hobby dollars as far as you possibly can to maximize your hobbying while still being a responsible adult. So, number of things that I want to go over here today, and this is just going to be kind of like a cursory overview, um, and I've been planning on getting more in-depth on some of these things in later videos, and I'll talk about that later on. But just off the top, we'll talk about army selection, uh, you know, which armies you might get your the most bang for your buck out of. Uh, the start collecting boxes that Games Workshop offers for various different armies. The boxed sets that frequently come out. We'll talk about discount retailers, uh, where you can find products for cheap. Buying and trading pre-owned models. This is uh, a big one that is uh, a really good way to get in very inexpensively if, uh, well, I guess if you have low standards. Um, and the final bullet point that really could be a whole channel into itself, I was going to say a whole video, but you could really dedicate a channel to resale strategies. Um, so I'm just going to briefly touch on that and some ideas of how that stuff works. And we will go from there. So let's get started on army selection. Now, I don't really have any suggestions right now. I haven't done the full analysis on anything to say, you know, what army is a cheap army? What army is an expensive army? It is pretty easy to say, though, that there are some armies that are much, much more expensive to get into than others are. Uh, typically, armies that have a very high model count are going to cost you more money. Uh, you kind of tend to pay per model or per unit, and if you have a, a lot of stuff to put on the table, if there's a lot of plastic hitting the table, then it's going to cost you more money. One thing to note here is that newer releases typically have fewer discounted product options available. There's less out there for resale. There usually aren't start collecting boxes for armies until they have been out for a while. And those other uh, discounted boxes and special boxes that they put out from time to time are typically not your new armies. So if you want to get into the new hotness, it's going to be expensive. And an interesting note here uh, that I have noticed is that although large models, you can get like sticker shock for how expensive some of the bigger models are, but they are very cost efficient from the perspective of like how many dollars per point that you're buying. You know, just as an example, a, a great unclean one from uh, the Nurgle army is over $100, but it's, you know, about a sixth of your army in one model. Now, a big caveat that everybody needs to pay attention to on this, a lot of the cheap army builds are not very competitive. And by competitive, I mean they're not going to be winning you tournaments. If you really want to get in on Age of Sigmar and be a uh, top contender at tournaments, going the discount army route may not be the best option. You may not really have that option available to you. So keep that in mind that a lot of this is tips for making things less expensive or getting in, getting your foot in the door 
for relatively inexpensive and expanding your hobby later on. But, you know, just as an example, the, probably the cheapest army to get into is Beast Claw Raiders, and it's also probably the worst one. I mean, two start collecting boxes and you're good to go. But, um, yeah, they're probably one of the worst armies in the game right now. So, be warned, do your research. I'm going to be saying that over and over and over again. Do your research. That is one of the key things to saving money in your hobby, is do your research. So, the aforementioned start collecting boxes. Their MSRP is $90 to $95 in US dollars. Um, and that's my reference for everything in here is in US dollars. I know it varies from country to country. In Canada, it's going to be different than in the United States. In the UK, it's obviously going to be in pounds. In Europe, probably in euros. If you're in Australia, I guess dollary dues or kangaroo bucks, whatever you guys are using down there these days. Um, but the point on this is that you're typically going to be saving 30 to 40 percent off of MSRP compared to buying the kits individually that are in these boxes. Some of them are even more. Some of them are over 50 percent sometimes. So it's definitely a very good place to look for potential savings. Very frequently, these things are going to contain essential units for their faction. Uh, they'll often contain battle line units, staples. Um, you know, Flesh Eater Quartz is a great example. You get a bunch of ghouls, you get a uh, zombie dragon, and you get some flares. Like, all three of those things are on point things that are going to be in virtually every Flesh Eater Quartz list. You know, as I mentioned on the previous slide, you can basically build a whole Beast Claw Raiders army out of pretty much two start collecting boxes. Uh, maybe start collecting boxes and like one other kit. Um, but there is a definite caveat here some of these will contain junk models. Um, a good example of this is the Maggotkin of Nurgle box. Uh, it contains a Lord of Blights. Why does it contain a Lord of Blights? I don't know. Nobody runs Lord of Blights unless they are running a Blight Cyst Battalion, and that is uh, not currently the hotness in that faction. You definitely don't need more than one, and... Uh, you probably want to buy more than one of this box. So that's something to keep in mind. Some are not going to contain battle line units. Like the Caradron Overlords box has no battle line units in it. It also doesn't really have anything of much value in it at all. So definitely be very careful. Do your research really limit yourself to buying start collecting boxes that are going to save you money compared to what you would be otherwise purchasing. Don't let the box guide what you buy. Decide what you're going to buy and see if buying a start collecting box instead is going to produce savings for you. Box sets. So these are usually limited time offers. Some of them will stick around for much longer. Uh, there often are holiday boxes. You know, around Christmas time, you'll have, you know, big battalion boxes that have, a, you know, a pretty hefty price tag, but are actually a pretty good value. Usually about once or twice a year, we get uh, these sort of starter set boxes where you have... Uh, two unrelated factions, uh, you know, to kind of get started into the game. Um, 
those are great for splitting with a friend or selling or trading away the half that you don't want. Uh, savings definitely varies on these. It really can uh, sometimes be a small savings, sometimes it can be a huge savings, sometimes it can look like a big savings, but there's a lot of junk in the box that you don't really want. Um, on some of these boxes too, just a note here, sometimes there's models in those boxes that will not be individually available for a long time. So that's definitely something to consider. Sometimes your only way to get a certain model for maybe six months or more is going to be buying one of these starter boxes that you're going to have half of it that you're not interested in um, and maybe some other models in your box that you're not that interested in as well. Um, you know, we still don't have our uh, Skaven Warlock Bombardier uh, in a clam box of his own. He is still only available through a uh, box set that is no longer available. So you currently can't get him and he's really good. Again, same warnings as start collecting boxes. Do your research. Make sure that you're not buying uh, discounted junk that you wouldn't otherwise be buying. Uh, and not actually saving yourself money. That is a very important thing to keep in mind. So discount retailers. There are a lot of places that you can buy product new in box, just like you find it on the shelf of any store, but it's below MSRP. That is you know, I've used that term before. I kind of have been assuming everybody knows it, but that is manufacturer suggested retail price. That's the price that GW says you are supposed to sell this box for. Many, even brick and mortar stores will sell for less than MSRP almost universally on Amazon and eBay and other online retailers. You can find these for below MSRP. There are online storefronts that will often sell for really steep discounts. Uh, you know, typically you're going to look at at least 10% off of MSRP if you uh, look around for the right sellers, and sometimes you'll be able to find ones that are up to 30% off of MSRP for brand new product. Now, just a word of warning here that you need to really look at the description of the products that you're buying because sometimes you are not going to actually be getting the the box of the thing. A good example, and we're going to be talking about this later on because I'm part of the problem. Um, if you... There are definitely people that will buy, say, start collecting boxes, break up the individual kits, and sell the individual kits on eBay. And unless you look at all of the pictures and descriptions of the product, you would not necessarily know that it is not the new inbox product, that it is still a new on sprue product. It is still brand new, but it's not actually the box. I don't know if that necessarily matters to anybody, Personally, it doesn't matter to me. As long as I've got all the parts and bases and instructions, I don't care. Uh, sometimes the instructions aren't even necessary. But beware, be careful. Um, you may be getting things that were uh, a bundled box, broken up, and resold. So make sure you know what you're buying, and if you care, pay extra attention. Otherwise... Uh, that is also a really great way to get even cheaper products, which we'll be talking about in a moment. So pre-owned models. This is a very, very good way to get into the hobby inexpensively. There are a lot of sacrifices 
that you can end up having to make to do this. You know, very commonly, you can get things on eBay, Bartertown, Craigslist. Your local game stores will often have things in their cases that are pre-owned. You could simply know people, uh, friends, clubmates, a uh, random guy that you meet in a store or a street corner, hustling plastic crack that is uh, going to offer you an army for far less than you would pay for all of those kits brand new. So here's the downside. All of those things are pre-assembled. They're often going to be painted. They are frequently going to be lacking the spare parts and bits that would come in the boxes. Um, your options are limited to just what's available in that lot that you're purchasing. Um, you know, a lot of times a unit will have multiple weapons options, and if you're buying pre-owned, uh, you are usually just going to be getting whatever the previous owner built them as. So, if you want to get exactly what you want, it can be a little bit difficult. If you're a little bit more open-minded, you can save tremendous amounts of money doing it this way. Now, this is how I got started in Warhammer. I Almost all of my free guild army is pre-owned stuff. There was not a lot of new inbox product that I have for that army. It is a crazy mishmash of things lots of kit bashes and head swaps and arm swaps all sorts of things but it's an army it functions um, if things are already painted if it's not a really gloopy paint job you can just reprime over it and paint it again or it might just save you that step of painting it you, you never know um, this is a good way to get an army for cheap. If your goal is to get an army as cheap as possible, buying pre-owned stuff is probably the way to go. That's probably going to get you the most models, the most points for your dollars. All of the warnings definitely apply, though. You need to really uh, pay attention understand what you're buying um, and just because stuff is being sold in a large lot does not necessarily mean that it is a good deal so if you're going to be making a purchase make sure you price everything out and see uh, what the actual MSRP of everything you're buying actually is what the buyer or what the seller rather is asking for it and see how much money you're actually saving and maybe you would be able to save more money by purchasing through other avenues. All right. So now this one is something that, you know, frankly, this is combining strategies and it's also uh, something that I could probably do a whole channel on. Uh, that I have talked to other people about, and this is just sort of uh, a few examples of resale-oriented strategies. eBay is a gold mine for Warhammer. You can buy stuff for cheap, and you can sell off the stuff that you don't want pretty easily. There are other online marketplaces where you can do similar things. Bartertown, Craigslist, others, uh, Facebook marketplaces. Uh, the number one thing that you can do is simply sell your old armies. If you're already in the hobby and you have old stuff kicking around that you're not using, don't see a use for anytime soon, just get rid of it. Just embrace Marie Kondo. If sh if that model is not bringing you joy, just sell it. 
also your other neglected hobbies other than Warhammer might be treasure troves of their own. I just recently went through a bunch of my old magic cards and ended up walking away with $600 in store credit at my local game store after trading in a pile of cards to them. They were super happy to have uh, their shelves restocked for a whole bunch of staple items, and I was really happy to walk away with a lot of store credit to uh, buy more Warhammer stuff. Win-win situation. Uh, example number two would be to buy a large army lot or, you know, not necessarily that large, but buy an army from someone or parts of an army from someone uh, either through eBay or one of the previous methods that I mentioned and just resell the things that you don't actually want. This is a, a pretty common and easy strategy. You can also take this sort of to the next level and find army lots that are very inexpensive. And if you're willing to invest the time and patience into it, you can simply buy a highly discounted army lot, break it up into individual lots and resell those for a profit. That is something that happens um, I know people that regularly do this. Um, not something that I personally have ever done, but I have definitely uh, resold plenty of items on eBay. Number three is buying those discount boxes, whether they are the holiday boxes or start collecting boxes they have something in them that you are not interested in but you can resell some piece of it on eBay to recoup some of your cost and get yourself an even bigger discount so this is a step-by-step -step illustrated example of what you can do with that. Just as an example, we're going to look at the Start Collecting Maggotkin of Nervil. That is $95 MSRP. I just looked it up on eBay. They are going for $80.75 on eBay for a buy it now. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them at that price. So immediately, just buying this box off eBay, you're saving yourself Fourteen twenty-five. Let's say you don't need a Lord of Blights. So now you can resell that individual model on eBay. That is currently going on eBay for about seventeen fifty. Assume about five dollars in shipping costs to get that back out there. So your net cost after reselling a component of that is sixty-eight twenty-five. The MSRP of the individual kits that you purchased is $120, and you paid $68.25 for them. So you're saving 43% off MSRP by simply buying a discounted box at a further discount and then reselling something that you don't want out of it. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. So that is all for now. I definitely want to do a more in-depth analysis of all of these start collecting boxes. Uh, that is going to be coming up in the future. And as always, do not forget to like and subscribe for more analysis in the future. And I will talk to you all later.